Right, Ben, so you saw uh, Different Man this week. How how was that? Or should really, we go and watch it? Yeah, really interesting. And I will I'll front load with, yes, you should watch it. I don't know where you should watch it. I don't know whether you should go and part with your hard-earned cash to go and sit and watch this in a, a, a wonderful cinema. I really, I got a lot from the film, but it's it's an interesting it's an interesting watch. It's an interesting theme, and I'm not sure to begin with upfront. I'm not sure that the film nails all of the the subject matter that it sets out to nail, but it is really fascinating. And there is some really interesting stuff that it gets into. So films about Edward who's suffering from neurofibromatosis, which is essentially um, like tumors all over his face. And you will have seen, if you've seen the trailer, you will, you'll know um, exactly what, what he looks like. Um, it, It looks like he has a, quite severe kind of almost disfigurement and people react to him in society the way that you might expect. Uh, He struggles with day-to-day life because he lacks confidence. He lacks the ability to really forge deep and meaningful relationships. Um, But he's offered up the chance to get experimental surgery that is going to be incredibly successful and life-changing. He has the surgery and it does change his life. He suddenly looks like a a very handsome, supposedly normal looking guy, uh, a conventionally attractive man, but uh, he worries about how people are going to react to him. He's lived his entire life looking one way and then suddenly he looks really, really different. And so instead of telling everyone that he's had this surgery and that everything's fine and he's kind of um, just ready to live his new life, he pretends that his former self, committed suicide and that Edward is now gone and he's now going to live out his life under the the name Guy. Now, just before he had the surgery, he had a a neighbour move in called Ingrid, who is a playwright. And Edward is is an aspiring actor. Ingrid is a playwright. And she says, one day I'll write a play and I'll put you in it. And uh, long story short, he is really struggling to get jobs when he changes his appearance, kind of changes his whole life and he starts a new life. And he never kind of has the opportunity to revisit that with with Ingrid and see if he can be in one of her plays. And because he's said that Edward has committed suicide, his relationship with Ingrid just disappears. Uh, They never see each other again until one day he sees that she's actually made the play that she always talked about making, which was a, a kind of biopic or a a sort of biographical theatre show about Edward. Um, He stumbles across it and is desperate to get involved in the play, but doesn't know whether to tell Ingrid whether he's actually Edward or whether he still wants to stay under the kind of false identity of Guy. Um, And everything changes when another charming and confident man, also with neurofibromatosis called Oswald, applies for the role of Edward and manages to get hold of the role. Now that's where I'll kind of like leave things because it just descends from there and it's you could not predict where it's going to go. Um, it is really, really fascinating in terms of what the story is trying to do. I'm not sure that it necessarily nails what it's trying to do. So the things that I loved about it, the transformation scenes so Sebastian Stan plays plays Edward and in the beginning he has lots of prosthetics all over his face. The transformation scenes are amazing and the subject matter that it delves into after he has this transformation is really interesting because he's suddenly become attractive to the world. And we all know, I mean, that like you and I have definitely made this point, I'm sure, at different sort of points in our life, but the world is geared towards attractive people. Yeah. Like the world is... The world is just a little bit easier for people that look like the kind of old school, stereotypical Abercrombie and Fitch models that used to be like the ones that everyone kind of wanted to have their picture taken with. And I know that comes with all sorts of problematic stuff that that's come to light over the course of the, the last kind of few years. But the world is certainly skewed towards attractive people tending to do better and the film is at pains to try and make that point in fact I think at one point they sort of say that out loud but in kind of having this character Edward experience life as a a so-called normal attractive person but still not be fulfilled it starts scratching at 
What are we really after? What is self-acceptance really about? What do we need to do in order to deserve kindness from other people, kindness from strangers, kindness from people that we really care about what they think? Um, and it, it and it really gets stuck into how we want to be perceived. Now, the character of Oswald is played by Adam Pearson, who is absolutely fab. He's brilliant. Um, and he, as I said before, he's a very charming, very interesting guy who basically shows the main character that you actually, if you want to, can be perfectly happy just the way you are. I would say where it falls short, there's so much meat on the bone in terms of what you could do with those characters in terms of like delving into why are people really nasty to people that don't look like them why are people really mean to to people that maybe have a disability or are struggling with things and again it 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 does sort of skirt around that subject matter but it never really goes into the heart of it mm. and it come it, bearing in mind that this film's come out at the same time as the substance now the substance leaves no stone unturned i think it would be fair to say that right by the end of the third act it's pretty much gone as far as it's possible to go with that idea to the point of it being extreme and a bit bizarre right at least well, that was my experience of it. i don't know what yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it, 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 it was it got to a point where like this is too far i would argue that because the substance gives you that it goes to the, the final furlong with it this stops a bit short and you're kind of left feeling like in in no man's land and by the time that you reach the end you don't actually feel like the film has explored enough of the subject matter for you to get that emotional payoff that you were so hoping for when you see this transition from Sebastian Stan's character, Edward, going from being someone that has these issues in their life to then being someone that is just living a, a kind of so-called stereotypical normal life. So it doesn't pack the punch that you want it to. Sebastian Stan is amazing in it, though. He's brilliant. He's far and away the MVP. He does this whole bitter, angry, twisted thing really, really well. Um, so to go back to the beginning, you should go and see it. It was funny. It was interesting. It, it pokes around a, a, a sort of philosophical subject that I think is is really, really cool. It requires you to invest a lot into it and it requires you to really sort of think about the film. I'd be tempted to watch it again, but I won't watch it again at the cinema. I will watch it again when it comes to streaming. And I think that's probably what I'd recommend for everyone else as well. One to wait for when it rocks up on Prime, Netflix, Disney, wherever. Um, and then really take some time over it and, and give it some thought. I've seen, a, I've seen a mixture of opinions on this. I've seen some people say it's absolutely brilliant and it's breathtaking. I've seen some people say that, it's a bit wishy-washy and doesn't quite sort of get there with it. And I'd argue that the, the reality is somewhere in between. Do you uh, think anybody will be up for awards consideration from this film? No, no. And I really thought from the trailers, I really thought that it was going to be one of those. I thought it was going to be awards for a hundred percent timing of the release, the subject matter, the way that it was shot. I mean, it looks beautiful. It's beautifully shot. I really thought I was going to be sitting there and it was going to move me a lot. Yeah. And the final act just didn't quite, didn't quite do it for me, but I would be interested to hear what other people thought and whether this, this was something for them that, that really, really moved them. And it, it, it sort of put all of the pieces in place and it just couldn't quite, couldn't quite get the point across that it wanted to, at least just in my opinion, at the end of the day, I'm very aware I'm just one voice on this, but I think it's one to watch on, on Netflix when it comes out. Well, let us know what you think. If you've seen A Different Man, drop us a comment um, either on YouTube or send us an email um, or reach out to us on any of our social channels at BYOB Pod. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, like I say, YouTube as well, and on X. Let us know if you've seen A, um, a Different Man. If you've got a different opinion to Ben, um, do like, do subscribe, hit notifications on YouTube so you can see when all of our Brand new film reviews come out um, and yeah, enjoy.